When you emailed me about the MT9 LT1 assignment, uh, you never told me which problem number two. So I'm doing both problem number twos on the first page and on the second page because I don't know which one you didn't understand. On the first part, we're supposed to use a table of values. Well, from our seminar, we know to find the middle term for x in your table of values, we're going to do negative b over 2a. I suggest, I suspect this is a problem you had because on this one, it's actually y equals negative 1x squared plus 0x minus 4. That is, a is negative 1, b is 0, and c is negative 4. <coughs> When there's no middle term, you got to notice that. So b is 0, so we have 0 over 2 times negative 1, which is 0, because 0 divided by any number is 0. So when you make your table, what we want to do is we want to put 0 right in the smack dab middle of your table. Now I'll go up a couple, and I'll go backwards. Now we're going to replace x with 0. Well, if this is 0, 0 minus 4, well, that's negative 4. Oops, I put that in the wrong spot. Let me see if I can just tap. There we go. Got that. Now let's do 1. So I'm going to do, do my work down here. So y equals the opposite of 1 squared minus 4. Well, that's negative 1, because 1 squared is 1, minus 4, which is negative 5. And once again, I'm not very smart with this. It goes right here. But look what happens if I put a negative 1. Let me switch colors on you so you can see the difference here. So I go the opposite of negative 1 squared minus 4. Well... Negative 1 squared is positive 1, so it's the opposite of 1 minus 4, which is negative 5. So in other words, these two are exactly the same. I'll put in 2. So y equals the opposite of 2 squared. Notice I, it's the opposite of x. So I put the number for x in the parentheses, but I keep the negative sign outside the parentheses. Well, that'll be negative 4 minus 4, which is negative 8. And if I put in a negative 2, I get the same answer. So that's why I plotted those. So let's plot from the center. 0, negative 4. So I go over 0. I go down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Put my point. Over 1 and down 5 over 2 and down 8, and then I can draw my parabola. And then we're going to supposed to state the domain and the range. Well, for any parabola, your domain is always all real numbers. Because no matter what number I put in for x, I could get an answer. My range is a little bit different. Notice this is a sad parabola because it's going down. It starts at negative 4 and goes down. So I'm going to say y has to be less than or equal to negative 4. That's our range. And that's what you would do for problem number 2 on the first page. Definitely got to see some work on that one, don't we? Let's take a look at problem number 2 on the second page. We kind of look at the same way. There's some different questions they're asking. Determine whether the function has a maximum or a minimum. Well, I notice it's a sad parabola, so we know it's going to be at its maximum. State the maximum or minimum value. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do x equals negative b over 2a. Now, in this case, a is negative 1, b is negative 4, and c is negative 4. So since b is negative 4, I'm going to say the opposite of negative 4 over 2 times negative 1. 
So I get positive 4 over negative 2, which is negative 2. That's the, that is the x-coordinate of your maximum. Okay. Now let's find the actual value. So we're going to say y equals the opposite of x squared minus 4x minus 4. Well, I'm going to replace x with negative 2. So get negative 2 squared minus 4 times negative 2 minus 4. Negative 2 squared is 4, but we have a negative sign in front of it, so that makes it negative 4. A negative times a negative is a positive, so we'll say plus 8. We'll say minus 4. We'll notice that. Negative 4 plus 8 is 4 minus 4, which is 0. So my vertex, or my maximum point, is at negative 2 and 0. And then we're going to find the domain and the range. Well, my domain, remember, from the just like the previous problem, too, is all real numbers. Since it's a sad parabola, I know the range is going to start at 0 and go down, so y is less than or equal to 0. And then finally, I'm supposed to graph the function. Well, we know your vertex is at negative 2 and 0. It's a sad parabola. Notice the number in front of x squared is 1, so when I go over 1 in either direction, I'm going to go down 1. Um, you could make a table like we did in the first one, but if I go over 2 from my vertex, I'm going to go down 4 from my vertex. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And then there is our parabola. And that's it. That's problem number two because we've done everything they asked. And that's how you do problem two. I don't know which one you needed, but you got both of them.